Okay, so today we're going to start talking about the organelles. And it gets us a lot of note taking today. Just FYI on you, make sure you space in between the different things that we're talking about. It'll make it easier when you come time to study. Will you straighten that camera? George point at the TV. All right, so the first thing we're going to talk about today is organelles. What are organelles? Organelle means little organ. All right, organelle means little organ. What do you think of when you hear the word organ? Like your liver. What else? What did you say? There is an instrument called an organ, but we're in science, Church. not music. I understand. I get it. All right. So, we, so, so the organelles is called a little organ. And when we think of organs, we think of like our hearts, our lungs, our liver, our kidneys, our digest, our stomach, and all that, right? So, if organelles are found inside a cell, and organelles means little organ, then do cells have organs within them? Yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah. Organelles are the specialized parts of a cell that have unique jobs to perform. All right, so organelles are a specialized part of a cell that have unique jobs to perform. So organelles is considered a little organ, which means they, they are organs and they have specialized parts that have unique jobs to perform. So when we think of our organ like our heart, our heart has a specialized thing that it does for our body, right? The heart's job is to pump the blood, to circle the blood throughout our body, right? And then we have the organs of lungs. The lungs' job is to what? Breathe. Makes it where you brings your oxygen into your blood, right? Into your system. So every one of our organs have specialized jobs too, right? <coughs> Everybody got this down? Let's start with the nucleus, the control center. All right, so we're going to start with the nucleus. And we were talking about organelles. So is the nucleus an organ? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So the nucleus is the controlled center of the cell. Yesterday we learned that a lot of people refer to the nucleus as the what of the cell? The brain. Could you answer that because you rose your hand, raised your hand? What? what do we call the nucleus? The brain. The brain. Yes, you guys are going to quit answering without being called on. So, it is the control center. Now, you know why it's called the brain. What's our control center? Our brain. Our brain tells the rest of our body what to do and when to do it, right? Same way with the nucleus and cells. The cell. The nucleus contains DNA or genetic material. We already know that, so we don't have to write that down. That should be in our notes from yesterday. Yes? Did you DNA dictate. Well, it didn't actually load up till about 2 33 o'clock this morning, but it is on there now. All right, so we know that the DNA lives in the nucleus, right? Okay, the DNA has a job inside the nucleus. And that is it dictates what the cell is going to do. You need to write this down. We didn't write this down yesterday. We didn't talk about this part of the nucleus yesterday. We did talk about it having DNA, but then we didn't talk about what the DNA's job was. 
Do the nice job is to let the cell know what it's going to do or dictates what it does. You need to understand what we what I do, we will probably be having a test next Wednesday over cells. There's a lot of information on cells, so I usually do that test by itself instead of including it with something else. And so today we'll finish up this. You guys that still need to get done writing, get done writing while I'm saying this. Uh, then tomorrow we'll have some review um, videos that we might take a few notes here and there off of. And then that's Wednesday. Thursday we'll have lab. And then next Monday, no, Thursday, next Thursday we have lab. I was going to have the test next Thursday, but I can't because that's the last day of the week. So then this Thursday we'll start on the uh, mitosis, which is the cell division, the process of the cell dividing and everything. And then uh, we don't get done with that Thursday, we'll finish it on Monday. Review on Tuesday, take the test on Wednesday. Okay. Everybody got this? Yeah. It's what the cell is going to do and how. Not only does it tell it what it's going to do, it tells it how to do it. The DNA tells it what it's going to do and it tells it how to do it. What's going to do it? Chromatin is the tangled, spread out form of DNA found inside the nuclear. All right, chromatin is your is the tangled, spread out DNA found inside the nuclear membrane. Now notice it doesn't say the nucleus. It says the nuclear membrane. Uh, Evelyn. From the chart that we did the other day, that we, when we drew our cell, tell me where you would find the nuclear membrane. That's the outer part of the. The outer part of the what? Nucleus. Yes. Now you notice it doesn't say the cell membrane. That's the outer part of the whole cell itself, right? The nuclear membrane is the outer part of the nucleus. You need to have your head up in my classroom. Has everybody got this down? Yeah. I'm going to be hard on y'all again for a while because y'all did real good last week and this week I don't know what happened. But all my seventh graders are going Remember, back to their old ways. When a cell is ready to divide, DNA condenses into structures known as chromosomes. Alright, so when the cell's ready to divide, the DNA condenses into structures known as chromosomes, or you can just put that it turns into structures known as chromosomes. If that's easier for you to remember. The big thing you need to know is that when the cell gets ready to divide, the DNA turns into chromosomes. It's a whole lot easier to study if you're putting spaces between each of these. So now like we're going to fix and talk about chromosomes. So when we start talking about chromosomes, you're going to want another space. That's chromosomes. The nucleus also contains a nucleolus. Alright, the nucleus also contains a nucleolus. We labeled that on our cell the other day, yes? And the nucleolus was found where? Inside the nucleus. The nucleosis and the nucleus, nucleus also contains a nucleosis. 
which is a structure where ribosomes are made. So ribosomes, which is something else that we labeled, right, are made inside the nucleus, nucleolus, which is inside the nucleus. So ribosomes are made inside the nucleolus. And yes, the nucleolus is different than the nucleus. Spelt different, now it's different, has a different job. Its job is to produce or to make the, ro the Robinson, Robinsons. Everybody got that? Still have a few people writing. After ribosomes leave the nucleus, they will have the important job of synthesizing or making proteins. All right, so what you need to know that what the ribosomes done, you don't have to write all that, just write the ribosomes' job is to make proteins. All right, so they are made inside the nucleolus, then they come out of it, and they make proteins. And we've talked about how important proteins is to our body, right? And to our cells. So their job is to make the proteins. Outside the nucleus, the ribosomes and the rest of the organelles float around in cytoplasm, which is the jelly-like substance. We already know that, we took notes on that yesterday. Ribosomes may wander freely within the cytoplasm or attach to the endoplasmic reticulum, sometimes abbreviated as ER. There are two types of ER. Rough ER has ribosomes attached to it, and smooth ER doesn't have ribosomes attached to it. The endoplasmic reticulum is a membrane enclosed past way for transporting materials, such as the proteins synthesized by ribosomes. Proteins and other materials emerge from the endoplasmic reticulum in small vesicles. All right, so the, the proteins, apparatus, sometimes the proteins in the cells come out as, come, come out as small vessels. Everybody know what a vessel is? A vessel is just a container that holds something. Something that holds something. A vessel is like a container. Okay, so they come out in little containers. And guess where they go? Anybody know? Where the Golgi apparatus, sometimes called the Golgi body. And we're going to call it the Golgi body. So they come out in small vessels and they are received by the Golgi body. So the Golgi body picks, picks up the proteins after they come out and start floating around in, in little vessels or little spaceships or little whatever you want to call them, little golf balls, whatever. And the Golgi receives them. That means it takes them in, right? You receive something, you take it in. Yeah. Receives them. As proteins move through the Golgi body, they're customized. All right, so as the proteins, so the Golgi body's taking them in, and now the proteins are moving through that little body, and they are customized. What does it mean to customize something? Huh? It's not necessarily to change it around. To customize it, it means to make it look or perform a specific thing. So that's a little bit different than changing, right? To customize something. So they customize these proteins. Into forms that the cell can use. Into forms that the cells can use. So they... Different proteins have different jobs, and where they find out what their job is is when they go to the googly body, and then it forms them and lets them know, basically, this is layman's terms. 
All right, so it forms the proteins so that the cells can use them or it customizes them. Customizes them into ways that the cells can use them. The Golgi body does this by folding the proteins into usable shapes. All right, so the Golgi body takes them and folds them into, into usable shapes. So they pick the protein up and they're going to customize it. And the process they use to customize it is they fold them into usable shapes or into shapes that the cells can use. Or adding other material. And they will also sometimes add, or add other materials onto them. So the Gogi body's job is to take the proteins and customize them into forms that the cell can use by folding and or adding other materials on them. And we're fixing to find out what some of the other materials are. <coughs> Ms. Dixon, you need to set up. That means your head does not lay down on your desk in my class. Do you understand that? Don't let it happen again. Okay. Materials onto them, such as lipids. All right, so the, one, of the, one of the materials it grabs is a lipid. Does anybody know what a lipid is, what lipids are? Fats. So you need to put on there that lipids equal fats. Or carbohydrates. Or they'll, or they'll add carbohydrates to it. What is a carbohydrate? Mr. Bow? The part that has, it's like made up of fat and carbs. I mean, mm. Okay, carbohydrates is anything that has sugar or the body breaks down into sugar is a carbohydrate. So like all your flours, your bread, your pastas, your cereals, those are all carbohydrates. Your candy bars, your suckers, uh, potatoes are is a carbohydrate. Your body, after you consume it, your body breaks it down into sugar. So carbohydrates, is is um, things you consume that the body breaks down into sugar is one way you can remember it. But the main thing I want you to know is that there's a scientific word, just like lipids is a scientific word for fats. Carbohydrates turns into sugar. The scientific word for sugar is, does anybody know? Glucose. Glucose is the scientific word for sugars. You need to know that. I guarantee you that question will be on the test somewhere. Either as a question or could be a bell ringer. I mean, not a bell ringer, but a, a bonus. Wasn't it already a bell ringer? Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah, most of you missed it. I got it right. Because you were supposed to already have it in your notes. So now I'm telling you again to put this in your notes. You need to know that lipids is a scientific word or means fats. And you also need to know that glucose is a scientific word or another word for sugar. However you want to put it in your notes. You can put lipids equal fats. You can put car, uh, sugar equals glucose. You know, just put sugar and equal sign and write glucose. I don't care, but you need to know that those are, those words mean, lipids means fats, glucose means sugar. Vacuoles are sac-like structures that store different materials. Here, in this plant cell, the central vacuole stores water. 
Going back to the animal cell, you will see an organelle called a lysosome. All right, a lysosome is the next word we're going to talk about. Y'all remember labeling this on your little cell chart? Lysosomes are the garbage collectors. Okay, they are the garbage collectors. When you think of a garbage collector, what do you think of? Trash, trash can. Trash can. So what do you think the lysosomes, what do you think their job is? Yeah. And, and what we have to remember is it does take out stuff, but it's not always bad stuff. A lot of times when you think of your body and you think of bad stuff, you think of stuff that's going to harm your body, right? Yeah, cool. But uh, what, but what, and it, what it takes out is the parts of the cell that are no longer functioning. They're wore out. So they're not, they're not necessarily bad. It's just not something we need anymore. They, they've outlived or outperformed their job. We're done with them. So we're going to pull them out. So they're not getting in the way of the other parts of the cell that are still functioning, okay? I don't want you to think that liposome only pulls out bad stuff that might make you sick or something. It's the reason I try to clear that up, okay? Because usually that's what people's head goes to when you think of bad stuff for the body. It's, or bad stuff in the body, it's usually some kind of sickness or bacteria or disease or something like that, okay? The taken damaged or worn out cell parts. So, its job is to take out, it's the garbage collector and it takes out the damaged or worn out cell parts. They are filled with enzymes that break down the cellular debris. You need to know that they are filled with enzymes. And as they take them in, then the enzymes go to work and it breaks them, to, it breaks down those worn out or damaged cell parts. And turns it into cellular debris. What do you think? When you think of the word debris, what do you think of? Yeah, trash. The tornado. tornado. Okay. That would be damaged left behind. All right, so think of it as the human body. What is what takes out our debris? What is our debris? Biggest bacteria. Yeah. Okay, so would you learn this when we get into the digestive system? But like when your body, when you eat stuff, your body takes all these nutrients out and stuff and uses it, but we always have parts of whatever we eat that the body does not need or does not use. And it comes out as poop. Well, the kidneys work on the fluid in that Okay? Yes, it comes out as poop. <laughs> So that would be our debris. Down the cellular debris. The mitochondrion is an organelle. All right, skip a line. We got another word here. Another word that we got to know. We, this is one that we labeled on our cell also, yes? That break down the cellular debris. The mitochondrion is an organelle that is the powerhouse for both animal. All right, so it's a powerhouse. When you think of powerhouse, what do you think of? And I don't want to know about that actor called The Rock or whatever. <laughs> a warehouse. A warehouse. When you think of powerhouse, you think of a warehouse. What do you, what do you think of? It's strong. All right, so when someone says turn on the power, what do you want them to turn on? The, the lights. lights. The lights, electricity, electricity. right? Who says so the power? usually a powerhouse is what box. makes things work, right? A breaker box. So like a light? A breaker box. A breaker box. 
sometimes because if you turn the breakers on, then you've got power, right? So when they think of a power a powerhouse is what makes other things work. So like a generator might be considered a powerhouse. Like those little food trucks that you see everywhere, they have generators that they run off of that makes it where they can have some lights and you know they have to keep the refrigerator going or whatever. So they're so they're the those little food trucks. Their uh, powerhouse is their generators. Okay, our powerhouse that how we get electricity to our houses is those transformers that they have up there. Those are the powerhouses. They convert the stronger electricity into weaker electricity that our house can utilize. Yeah, transformers. Not like, <laughs> not like the cartoon. All right, so the powerhouse. So the, so the mitochondria is, is what gives the cell its power. It's what makes it do, gives it the power to do the things it needs to do. Okay? Now that is the powerhouse for both animal and plant cells. During a process called cellular respiration, the mitochondria make all right, cellular respiration is where the mitochondria works, it's where it does its job, and it makes ATP molecules. It makes ATP molecules. ATP molecules that provide the energy for all of the cell's activities. And the ATP molecules is what provides the energy for the cell. So that's why it's called powerhouse. Anything that gives you the energy is your powerhouse. Or gives something energy, it's the powerhouse. So it provides energy to all the cell's activities. Any questions on that? Everybody think they understand that? So like the nucleus is the brain, right? And what was the Robinsons? What did, what did the Robinsons do? They make the protein. And what did the nucleolus do? Produces the ribosomes to make the proteins. What takes in the proteins? The Goji body takes them in. And while they're in there, what does it do to them? Customizes them so they to do what? Perform whatever job they have to perform, right? All right. Any questions? So are you seeing how all the cell parts come together and work together? And that's why it's called that reason cells are so important. Some people call it the cellular system. Provide the energy for all of the cell's activities. The cells that need more energy have more mitochondria. Which only makes sense, right? Meanwhile, the cell maintains its shape through a cytoskeleton. All right, cytoskeleton is what helps the cell maintain its shape. So it has a skeleton just like we have a skeleton. So it's called a cytoskeleton. Now we've already talked about the cytoplasm, right? And that's the gel-like consistency in it. This is what helps it hold its shape, is the cytoskeleton. The cytoskeleton includes the thread-like microfilaments, which are made of... All right, so it, it, it includes... Thread-like microfilaments, which are made of protein, which is made of protein. I 
keep telling y'all how important protein is to our body. And there's many different types of protein. Includes the thread-like microfilaments, which are made of protein. So the microfilaments is what the cytoskeleton is made of, basically, right? Or is. And they are made of proteins. Everybody got that? Yeah. Huh? The microfilaments is basically the cytoskeleton's bones, like our bones is our skeleton, right? So the microfilaments is the bones of the cytoskeleton, okay? And those microfilaments are made of protein. I will tell you that my seventh and eighth graders both thought the cell test was one of the hardest tests I gave last year. And the reason there is is because there's a lot of information. So I hope you're getting all this wrote down in your notes. Because I'm not going to make, we probably won't make note cards on every single thing. But we might. Who knows? And microtubules, which are thin, hollow tubes. All right, so they have microfilaments and then microtubulars. Microfilaments are the fibers and then the microtubulums are thin hollow tubes. So they're kind of like straws. You might think of them as straws. That might help you remember that they're a thin hollow tube and they're called microtubulars, which the word itself pretty much has the definition in it, right? Mm -hmm. Tiny tubes, all you gotta remember is they're hollow. Yeah, or else it technically means they're slender. Oh, what? Or a rod. Well, I guess technically you would have to change the name to microfiber rods then. Yeah, they are hollow. Some organisms, such as plants, that are photoautotrophic. Now we're not going to take notes on this part because.